Certain metaphors structure the American imagination. The house with the white picket fence, supposedly everyone's dream. The cowboy, setting out alone across the landscape, accompanied only by his faithful horse and his ten-gallon hat. The pioneers, rolling in rickety wagons across the prairie with all of their earthly possessions, headed for a better life. The hard-working, self-made man. Each of these images stands in for an ostensibly American value, adventure, courage, and entrepreneurial spirit, bootstrap tugging, hope that something better will always be just beyond the horizon. The idea that the field is level and bounteous to all who are willing to work, and, conversely, that the remedy for tough times is work. Nomadland evokes and rewrites these cultural themes by telling its own story, one that counters the metaphors with reality. Based in part on Jessica Bruder's 2017 non-fiction book Nomadland, Surviving America in the 21st Century, and written and directed by Chloe Zhao, it's a piercing look into a country that's becoming less and less inhabitable for its older men and women, and more stingy about who gets to dream. And, fundamentally, it's a poignant portrait of a broken heart. Frances McDormand plays Fern, one of a growing number of American seniors who find themselves, at the end of a long life of working hard, with very little to show for it. Text at the beginning of the film tells us that in 2011, faced with a declining demand for sheetrock, U.S. gypsum shut its plant in Empire, Nevada, which had been a company town for 88 years. Within six months, the town was decimated, so thoroughly that its zip code was entirely discontinued. Frances McDormand in Nomadland. Searchlight pictures that's all true, and many of the people who populate Nomadland are real, too. It's not a documentary, but it's not really fiction, either. Nearly everyone in the film is playing themselves. When U.S. Gypsum shut down its plant in Empire, 95 jobs evaporated. The company closed the town and told the workers who had lived there that they had to leave, since the company owned the houses, too. At one point, the place had an airport, a daycare facility, a public pool, a golf course. By mid-2011, it was a ghost town. Left with no option but to leave, Fern buys a large van, puts her things into storage, and takes off down the winding road to an Amazon warehouse. She and other seasonal workers will live in their vehicles in an RV park and pack boxes during the busy holiday season as part of the company's Camper Force program. When it's over, they move on to the next job. Fern's friend Linda May tips her off to an annual gathering of nomads, as the itinerant older seasonal workers call themselves. It's called the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous, led by Bob Wells, who through his YouTube channel and other means has created a network of folks like Fern, who live in their vehicles. Wells is a self-described fan dweller and move from place to place.